it's Hannah of Pencil and Ink Studios here, uh, continuing our project of uh, the Halloween designs we were starting with. So the next step after you've drawn all of your elements, um, I did a couple of them on my own. So I have a couple of pumpkins right here ready to go. Um, I have them in, I have a blank file here that I want to start a new art piece on and I take each group which has all the different layers here so like the the stroke the extra lines the shade and I drag it over and some people like to leave the layers in if they want to change it later but for me since I am I'm I like how this is and I don't want to change it I am going to merge the group and now I have a little flattened icon right here that I can use, a little elements I can move around. Uh, so I'm going to move all of them over here, going to flatten each group, and then I have one more here. And so now I have three elements that I could play around with. Um, so then after this, uh, the next step is starting to toss each element. So I like to start on the edge of the image. Uh, there's a lot of ways to make an, um, a file into repeat, uh, but this is the technique I do, which is kind of like a trial and error system. So I'm, this is very random. I, it, I make choices based on how it visually looks. Uh, so I'm gonna repeat this guy over here and I would say three different elements are like the minimum you should use because otherwise then you're just repeating the same image over and over again and it could get very boring to look at. So I'm going to do one more here and see how they overlapped here. I'm going to move them over a bit. And I don't want these two to be exactly the same because it'll give this visual look of a line. Okay, so after I've tossed around this area, I um, put all of them into a group, so that's what I know. I put my um, guidelines against where they start and end, and I am going to make a copy of this entire folder and merge it together. So now I have this mesh together. I then use this tool to highlight, and I press down here and it masks where I put it. So when I move it around, it just looks like that. I'm gonna make a copy of that and I'm gonna move it all the way over here and I kind of visually look at where it ends. And again, there are so many different ways to do this, but this is the way I find the easiest and I could like triple check that nothing is laying on top of each other. See like here, I can already see that there's a mistake there. So what I do is I can move this guy over a little bit and move this guy up a bit. I'm gonna move some stuff around. And then once I know that, I just do this one more time. And again, it's very much a trial and error, so it, I totally understand, like, if you don't like to do it this way, I just find this, I like to be very particular to make sure I get the repeat just right, and I like how it looks. Move it over. And again, this is just the first layer that I'm doing. So after I figure out how I like the repeat here, I'm going to add other elements to fill out the entire thing. So now that we have this, we can go in and add some more. Just go over here, move them around a lot. And again, it's very much trial and error. You see what it looks like. Do I like these next to each other? I might move this guy up a bit. I might turn them a bit. And that's a pretty solid start to a repeat pattern. 
I actually have a little bonus for you for this video. I'm going to show you what the full uh, pattern will look like at the end. So um, on my own, I made this little repeat of uh, these bat elements I made. And again, I only drew about three of them and then I tossed them and played around with it. And what this is now is a usable repeat pattern. So to make this for Photoshop, I go to edit and define pattern and see it says bats here. So then when I want to just open up, let's say a random sized file on this layer, I can add a pattern. Well, that was a sneak peek, but pattern and you see this on its own could be a piece of fabric. But what I like to do is I like to give give a little depth to um, all the fabrics that I design. So I don't like just doing a, a pattern and then nothing behind it or just a blank color. I like to add a pattern and I usually make it a little bit transparent. So I could either leave it white or I did a purple here that I really like. And again, to do the same thing, you go to edit, define pattern. I could go back to this sample again and just change the pattern overlay. And I'm gonna scale it down so you could see how it looks. And there, you have a final piece of fabric.